Welcome to Blood Flow Thursday, boys and girls. So you guys have a 21 minute AMRAP, and per normal, 21 minute AMRAPs on Thursdays or anything on Thursdays. We're not looking to rush through these. We're not racing against the clock. We're kind of slowing this thing down. You guys have seven dual dumbbell rows. It'll be a three second lower on each one of those. So definitely some tempo work here today. You're gonna do seven and seven box touchdowns. 21 ceiling crunches with a two second lower. You'll then do 14 dumbbell hammer curls with a two second lower and then finish off with seven and seven cross body RDL. So main concept here guys is make sure you're going to the tempo prescription, we're not rushing through that. We're not worrying about how many rounds we're doing, just kind of doing some different accessory work for this Thursday. All right, warm up and your activation day for this Thursday. You guys are gonna do a six minute easy AMRAP. You're gonna do to do, do seven and seven suitcase deadlifts, kind of hard to see there with the lights. All right, so just a dumbbell or kettlebell, dumbbells end up on the side of the foot like so, and back at the top, guys. Make sure you maintain a nice neutral spine. You'll do seven per side. From there, you're gonna go into eight and eight curtsy squats or curtsy lunges. So remember, just gonna kind of reverse lunge and kind of twist to the side. You'll do eight per side there, 16 total. And then you're gonna do a 15 second per side single arm plank. So Kale's gonna be in a plank hold position. All right, he's gonna bring one arm behind him. I'd recommend the feet about somewhere about shoulder width, roughly. And you can put that arm kind of up against his chest, behind his back, it's really his call. Um, make, make sure you guys aren't rotating the trunk, all right? If needed, you can just do a traditional plank or you can bring down that volume as needed. So we're not looking to go crazy on the warm, we're just kind of get some blood moving around. Moving to the activation piece, you guys have some static holds here today. You're gonna do a 30 second glute bridge hold. All right, so Kel's gonna be on his back bridging up against those heels again, and just holding that static position for a 30 second count, all right? Make sure you guys don't overextend. You shouldn't feel in your lower back. You wanna feel the glutes and the hamstring squeeze the whole entire time. From there, you're gonna finish, or not finish off, but you're gonna move into a 15 second per side single arm row hold. So you'll grab a dumbbell or a kettlebell. You guys are gonna do a single arm row hold, and just hold that static position for 15 seconds per side. And then finish off with another static hold. You're gonna do a 30 second Wall sit, all right, legs about 90 degrees and just camping out there with your back completely flat against the wall. Make sure you're not leaning forward against the wall like that. Everything's gonna be nice and flat. And that's one from the activation day. <coughs> Pre-workout mobility today, you guys had a little supine twist. So Kale's gonna lay on his back, be in that supine position, belly facing up. Leg at 90 degrees, he's gonna rotate that leg to the side. Try to keep his torso or his trunk pretty square here. We don't wanna rotate off to the side. You'll camp out there for one per side. Next up, you're gonna do fingers down wall stretch. So Kel's gonna work his way to the wall. Fingers down, just like the uh, stretch says here. You're gonna nice stretch to the front of the shoulder, the bicep in the form. He'll try to rotate as much as he can there. He'll do one minute per side there as well. And then finishing off with a little bit more of an active stretch. So he'll lay down on his belly now in that prone position. You guys are gonna do some scorpions here. So arms or hands are gonna make a diamond. All right, his arms are gonna be kind of like around a 45 degree angle roughly. And then from there, he's gonna rotate all right over trying to keep both those elbows down on the floor and then rotate the other way. And you'll do eight per side, six total. So notice how as he's here, he's trying to keep this elbow down, more particularly down. So he should feel a nice stretch through kind of a little bit more of the shoulders and the pecs there as well. And you'll do, like I said, 16 total, eight per side. And that'll put a wrap on some pre-workout mobility. All right, movement demonstration. You guys have some dual dumbbell rows to start this thing off with. Kelly's gonna go chase down another kettlebell or dumbbell here. All right, so you need a pair or a pair of kettlebells. If not, you can do single arm. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, so kind of turn the side there for Mikhail. So Kale's gonna be in this hinged over position. We want the shoulders kind of over the toes, guys, while maintaining a nice neutral spine. So we don't wanna be too vertical. This is what a common error that we'll see is being too upright. You wanna be pretty close to 90 degrees, give or take a little bit. From there, keeping everything still, only thing that's gonna move now is the arms. Bring those elbows back and he'll do a three second lower. So one, two, three, back up quick. One, two, three, and complete seven reps. The biggest thing is make sure you maintain a good tempo prescription of that three second lower. So we'll complete seven reps there. Uh, moving into box touchdown. So uh, it's been a little while, so we've done this obviously because um, we've been a little bit more in the quarantine situation now. Uh, so if you guys happen to have a box or a chair or something to go off of, this is what you're gonna use. So Kel's gonna come to the top of the box. All right, so ideally what we're gonna look for here is you guys can either do it laterally or you can just do it from the back side here. Either way is fine. Um, so we're gonna demonstrate both. So ideally what we're looking for is more of a lateral movement. So Kel's gonna kind of shift towards the camera here a little bit. As he goes down, he's gonna point that toe up, 
keeping that weight back in the heel and back to the top. All right, notice how he doesn't crash down into the bottom, so kind of crash in the bottom there, Kale. Yeah, we kind of lose that tension. That's one thing we don't see, and not hopping off the bottom, we don't see that as well. So see, he kind of hops off the bottom. We only want that leg that's on top of the box to do all the work here. All right, now, um, there's a lot of restrictions that might happen, whether it be strength, motor control, uh, or just flexibility issues. So if you guys only have like a tall surface, don't have anything low, just go down as far as you feel comfortable with. Let's so say it's about halfway, and then back up from there. Even just set much range of motion is perfectly fine. Uh, that's one way you can do it, that's ideal. If not, you can do it from behind the box. It's gonna be a little bit easier this way. So same concept, I would kind of drag the, the toe behind the box like so, going straight down, keeping the foot flat, and back to the top. If you go too far down, guys, and you kind of have to roll up the ball of the foot, that's when you know you've gone too far. We gotta keep that foot flat the whole entire time. So you'll do seven per side, 14 in all. Moving into ceiling crunches, so Kale's gonna lay on his belly, for, or sorry, on his back for us. So remember, your bias is gonna be straight. He's gonna reach up towards the ceiling. And remember, he's just a small range of motion. Just a troll base is gonna leave the floor and he'll control himself down nice and slow for two seconds and back up. All right, you'll do 20 reps here. So the very controlled fashion, guys, don't try to rush through these. There's gonna be a big burn in that upper abdominal region and that's what we're looking for. So you'll do 21 of those. From there, you're gonna move into some hammer curls. If you only have kettlebells and not dumbbells, guys, not a big deal, just do a regular curl. You don't have to do a hammer curl. So with the hammer curl, we're gonna have the palms neutral. He'll keep the elbows tucked in, pulling. From there, he's gonna do a two second lower, one, two, and then back up again. And you'll do 14 reps through there, nothing too fancy. And then finishing off with, with a uh, single, uh, or sorry, a cross body RDL. So you only need one dumbbell or one kettle for this. Feet are gonna be relatively narrow, uh, not too narrow, not touching or like that. Maybe about hip width apart. From there, as he goes back, he's gonna kind of bring that dumbbell in front of the opposite foot, like so, and back to the top. So kind of turn the side for me, Kale. So as he does it, he wants to think about sending the hits back, guys, keeping that spine neutral, constantly sending the hit back the whole entire time, and back to the top. At no point in time should we see the knee move forward. So that'd be more like a squatting motion, and the hamstrings kind of turn off. We're gonna start using the more of the quad. We wanna focus on that hamstring. So if you start to feel in your low back at all, that, that means you've gotten a little too tight in the hamstrings and you're starting to use that back to compensate to go lower, that's okay, just don't go down as low. So he can stop about, let's say about right there and back to the top, that's okay. He's still getting that rotation happening. He's still keeping good tension to the hamstrings. And you'll do seven per side there. And that'll put a wrap on your marathon movement demo. So some post-workout mobility, you guys have some figure four here today. Um, so what are you gonna do here? Get in close to the wall. From there, Kel's gonna flip over into like a squatting position, all right, with his feet flat. He's gonna bring one leg over the top, kind of making that figure four position. And he's gonna relax this leg in particular that's on the wall to allow his hips drop down towards the floor. The more he can relax into the stretch, the better. So we don't want to have a lot of tension. We don't want to be pressing or, or trying to push into that wall. We want to kind of relax that leg to get a nice stretch. You can put a little pressure on this knee as well to try to keep it roughly about 90 degrees. So we'll camp out there, I believe, for a minute and a half per side. Um, you're going to go into pancake. All right, so feet out as wide as possible. All right, and just from there, just control the breathing. Relax the hamstrings and the low back. You'll do that for 90 seconds as well. And you'll come back to the wall to finish off with the fingers down, stretch again. So we're gonna have fingers down, right? From there, he'll rotate his trunk as much as he can. And you guys will camp out there for a minute per side as well. And that puts a wrap on your Thursday.